Have you ever heard of a car company charging its customers to be able to use features on the car they've already paid for? Well, that's exactly the situation the owner of this Mercedes is in, and to top it off, the state of his vehicle isn't making that any easier to stomach. I'm not a huge fan of this stuff. Hey, what's going on guys and welcome to the channel. Now in today's episode, I'll be fully detailing this filthy 2022 Mercedes GLE 53 AMG and I'll give you my thoughts and opinions on the overall fit, finish and quality of this vehicle, so stay tuned. Okay, moving to the wheel wells now, and because this is a Mercedes, it's a luxury vehicle, they're going to have uh, carpeted liners in here, and uh, what those do is basically, you know, act to reduce road noise inside the cabin. Uh, however, if you've watched any of my other previous videos, um, basically what they do on the outside is they hold on to all the dirt, all the muck, and they're incredibly difficult to get perfectly clean. Uh, it takes a long time to get, you know, to spray them out and uh, get all the dirt out of there, so. Uh, I'm not a big fan of them, uh, as I've, I've said numerous times before, but um, yeah, either way, I mean, you gotta, you gotta deal with what you have on the vehicle, and uh, these ones have carpet liners, so they're gonna, they're gonna take a little bit of time to get sprayed out here. It is absolutely ridiculous just how much dirt and mud these things can hold on to. It's crazy. Plastic liners, be a better option. Moving to the other carpeted wheel well now, and I figured I'd give you some background on the vehicle. So oddly enough, it showed up today with Washington plates on it, which I of course had to ask the owner about. And I guess he and his family just moved back here after spending a few years living down there. And after having owned the car for 12 months now, he's put just over 28,000 kilometers or about 17,000 miles on it and obviously uses it as his daily driver. So it's gotten pretty dirty over that time frame.
Okay, so next up is the door jams here, and I know this is probably a crazy idea to a lot of you. Actually, uh, you know, spray these out with a pressure washer. Um, it's honestly not as crazy as you think. Uh, as long as you control the wand, you spray at a steep angle like I do, um, you really aren't gonna get any water going inside the vehicle. Um, but trust me, before I did it for the first time, I was very skeptical too. Uh, but yeah, tried it and it's super easy. Uh, inside of the car stays dry and it's the easiest way to get your uh, door jams clean, so. Not a single drop. Now, one, uh, one unique thing about this particular vehicle is that it's actually got a, a full uh, a full body uh, paint protection film on it. Um, so a lot of times you'll just, you'll see that stuff kind of on the leading edges of the vehicle, uh, part way up the hood, kind of the whole front bumper, maybe the side mirrors, that sort of thing. Or sometimes back here where, you know, you might see some, uh, some rocks get, uh, get kicked up, but this vehicle has it wrapped on the entire exterior, all the paint. So honestly, it doesn't change anything in my process. I'm still using the same products I always would, you know, the Mega Foam and uh, my car shampoo, they're perfectly safe to use on it, but um, it, it just, my perspective, I'm not a huge fan of this stuff. Um, I get it, you know, I get why people do it. I, it serves its purpose well. Um, you know, if you're traveling down gravel roads a lot, um, you know, it's gonna stop the rock chips and protect your paint, but I don't really see the point of doing it on the entire vehicle. Uh, kind of just diminishes the look uh, and the feel of, you know, such an expensive vehicle, but to each their own. Um, anyways, yeah. So it doesn't really change anything I do, so that's always good. Although I do have to say, uh, when it is on front bumpers and stuff, it can be a lot harder to clean. Um, bug guts and stuff really get baked into it by the sun, so um, there can get, you know, it's just, yeah, if anything, I'd say it's a little bit harder to clean, but uh, in this case, the vehicle is not super, super dirty. It's pretty new, so um, yeah, no real issue with that today, so. Starting in the floor mats now, and the first real comment I have about the quality of this vehicle is that these floor mats aren't very good. In most other vehicles, the floor mats are better quality carpet than the actual carpet inside, but this Mercedes is backwards in that regard, which is especially surprising considering this is a fairly pricey vehicle.
All right guys, well, I am just about to get started uh, on the interior here. And usually with the first thing I'd be doing would be removing all of the owner's, you know, personal items, uh, you know, taking stuff out of the storage compartments, glove box, um, you know, any garbage that's in the vehicle. Uh, but this owner was actually nice and uh, he, he spent a couple of minutes this morning when he dropped it off and, and took all the stuff out. Um, he had a couple car seats in the back and the trunk was kind of full of stuff too. So um, not everybody does that. Uh, you know, have you seen in, in some of my, my previous videos, uh, some people do leave a lot of stuff, a lot of garbage. Um, but uh, yeah, thankfully I don't have to deal with that today. So it saves me a couple minutes and I can get right into vacuuming. Now as I've gotten further into this Mercedes, I have a few thoughts to share about the overall quality and some of the business practices I alluded to in the opening. So as for the overall fit, finish and quality of the vehicle, I'd say that it's right on par with BMW, as you'd probably expect, however I would give the nod to BMW for the simple fact that their interior plastics are a bit easier to clean, and then of course there's the whole subscription based service Mercedes is moving towards. Believe it or not, the owner of this vehicle has to pay to use things like heated seats, remote lock and unlock. The navigation system and more if you're shaking your head hearing that well i am too those are all things he's already paid for when he bought the car as the equipment is in it so i have to say it's pretty disgusting mercedes is doing this and they certainly aren't the only manufacturer either i really think the governments need to step in and regulate this sort of thing as they've already taken it a step further and are charging for performance-based features now as well anyways i'd be curious to hear your thoughts on this and whether you think this is a good thing or a predatory business practice that should be illegal Okay, now for these split material seats where it's leather and suede, my ready to use carpet cleaner is the perfect choice as I can spot spray where I need to. And then because suede is a bit more delicate than regular upholstery, I'm using my soft white drill brush on a slower speed, but will then extract them as usual. And a few minutes later, and the seats are perfectly clean. You can find the carpet cleaner on my website at detailgeekautocare.com along with everything else I use to transform these vehicles. And as Christmas is coming up, now is the perfect time to grab a gift card for someone if you need a last minute gift idea for the detailing enthusiast in your life.
Here's all the surprisingly dirty water the Mighty pulled from the Mercedes today, and while it's pretty gross, it pales in comparison to the vehicle featured in Tuesday's Quick Fix video here on the main channel. That's right, the popular Quick Fix series from the second channel has been moved over to the main, so keep an eye out every Tuesday for a condensed version of one of my older videos. For those of you who maybe don't have quite as much time to watch a full one, the Quick Fix series offers the same satisfaction, just in a shorter format. Okay guys, well with the interior basically done at this point, this is usually the time I'd be reaching for my polisher, grabbing my paint sealant, and getting some protection on this on this paint. Uh, or you know, or even grabbing my uh, my graphene spray coating or my ceramic spray coating and you know getting that on the paint here. But since this vehicle has paint protection film covering every inch of the paint, um, a lot of people might say there's kind of no point in doing that. Uh, I myself have always been a, a fan and you know have always added that extra layer of protection. It's not 100% necessary obviously because the, you know, the, the PPF is, is there to protect the paint, that's the whole purpose of it, but you're just not going to get the hydrophobic properties or that extra little bit of gloss that you could get if you do add you know, a, a wax or a sealant on top. So I've always been a fan of doing that. Um, however, the owner uh, is actually requested in this case that I just leave it as is. Uh, he doesn't want anything else put on top of it, so uh, basically I can Kind of just skip over that step right now and uh, move on to, to getting all the glass clean.
All right, guys, well, eight hours is what it took to get this beautiful Mercedes back to showroom status. And I have to say, there's just something about working on a nicer vehicle like this that makes it more enjoyable. Um, you know, the interior components are all a little bit higher quality. I don't have to fight to get them clean, kind of like I did with that Chevy Traverse last week. So uh, yeah, it's always, it's always a pleasure to work on something like this. Uh, but anyways, if you guys enjoy this transformation, make sure you smash the thumbs up button, subscribe to the channel, enjoy the guitar intro, and I'll see you guys in the next one.